It happened uh, basically. I saw the car, saw the gun. I saw the gun. They went faster, and then they came back. They shoot. They're holding the gun on me, like you know. When they came around, I said, "What?" And they start shooting on me. Got she it. was just, she, she was just walking around. She was walking. She was gonna go somewhere, I think. So you think that they were shooting at you yeah. initially, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then caught her instead? Uh, responsive? Is she breathing? No, 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 she's not responsive. She's got a very weak pulse. Uh, we're just starting CPI. Okay. Come on, keep going, guys. Doing well. Keep going, guys. Keep going. We should be here any second. I you can should hear. be able to see them in seconds. All right. The man you can hear on the phone to the police is Pasha Khan. He was the intended target of the shooting in Blackburn during Ramadan last year that resulted in the death of law student Aya Hashem. Aya was walking to the shop to buy some food and she passed a business called a Quickshine Car Wash. She then chose to stop to let two bike riders pass and they noted in court that if she hadn't have done that, she may have lived today. At the exact moment she did that, a car was pulling up alongside her to take aim at the owner of the car wash who was stood behind her. The first shot smashed glass and the second shot fired from the back seat of the car, hit Aya in the chest. She was fatally wounded and lost her life, despite the efforts of passers-by at the scene and also Pasha Khan. Stood only metres away at the time of the shooting was Faraz Solomon. He was the owner of the business next door to Quick Tires, RI Tires, and the organiser of the attempt assassination of a business rival, Mr Khan. He was caught on camera looking over to Mr Khan moments before the gunman opened fire, and the prosecution said he knew what was going to happen. But instead of Mr Khan being shot, Aya was shot, and on CCTV Mr Solomon was seen walking forward, and then crossed his arms and walked into his office, and they pointed out that he had a phone in his hand, and he didn't try to call an ambulance. This was how confident Solomon was in his plot to kill his rival. He even stayed at the scene to watch the drama unfold. Solomon had a good life, a successful business and a loving family. R.I. Tyres had gained a following on social media and he would show off the fleet of sports cars to subscribers and followers on YouTube and Instagram. But it seemed that greed and ego led to the downfall of the Blackburn businessman. He also involved seven other people in the plot for revenge and to regain control that he believed he was losing to a rival business. In a picture taken at a work dinner before the murder of Aya, no one would have guessed that several people at this table would conspire with Solomon to commit murder. Also before the murder, he shared pictures of his trip to Dubai to celebrate his birthday. and he was constantly increasing the amount of cars that he owned and would drive around Blackburn and posted the videos to social media. Business was booming and then Mr Khan moved in next door and opened up Quickshine Car Wash. Shortly after they started to sell tyres as well and he put them in direct competition with RI tyres. In court it was revealed there were several different incidents where police had to attend the businesses before the shooting took place. On the 13th of the 1st, 2019, Pasha Khan contacted police and said he was being threatened and blackmailed by Suderman and his brothers. Nothing was done about this. On the 17th of the 1st, 2019, Khan reported to police to say one of the cars that had been washed at Quickshine had been stolen and they suspected R.I. Tyres was responsible, but no one was identified. On the 25th of the 2nd, 2019, police attended R.I. Tyres following 15 people fighting outside. On the 9th of the 4th, 2019, Sunderman sent a text to Khan saying, you guys are doing it again, going over to our customers and trying to get them to come to you. Mr. Khan didn't respond. On the 22nd of the 4th, 2019, Sunderman said he'd been a victim of a public order incident by one of Mr. Khan's employees. Police spoke to the individual and Sunderman didn't want to take it further. A public order incident again occurred on the 15th of the 5th outside RI Tyres and a fight was ongoing between two men. On the 19th of the 5th, Mr. Khan 
haven't reported ongoing issues with the RR tires. On the 26th of the 8th, two calls were made to police about 8 to 15 men fighting in the street. Sutherman recorded a video on his phone and it said, With your shitty quickshine, I'm going to burn your face, M. Effa. On the 5th of February 2020, texts were exchanged between Sutherman and Bruce Henderson. Sutherman said, I'm going to twat him. On the 17th of the 2nd, police were called when employees from two businesses began throwing bolts and scrap metal at each other in the street. On the 17th of the 2nd, 2020, Solomon's brother posted on R.I. Tyre's WhatsApp group, For us, get those lot wasted now. On the 28th of the 2nd, 2020, an informal mediation was done between R.I. Tyres and Quickshine, and it took place at Blackburn Police Station. Mr. Khan wanted a brick wall built, but Solomon wanted to build a fence. Mr. Khan refused to pay for half. So Solomon said he would pay for it. A quick shine customer heard workers from RO Tires shouting at Mr. Khan, saying, why the hell are you giving business to that man? Come to us and we'll do the work for free. He's not even British, he's scum. Get back to where you came from, it was said. And they also said, we will set fire to the place. And the 15th of the 3rd, 2020, Solomon said the conflict was ongoing. So both people are dealing with the police. There was accusations from Mr. Khan and also Solomon as well. Solomon emailed the police, say the fence company had come to take measurements, but Quickshine wouldn't allow them access. Mr. Khan called the police and said R.I. Tyre's staff were encroaching onto his property and stealing customers. Police were called to reports of eight men fighting outside and using stones as weapons. Nothing was happening when the police arrived though on the 19th of the 3rd, 2020. On the 1st of the 5th, Solomon called police and said Mr. Khan had prevented workmen from entering to put up the new sign for R.I. Tyres. He said that Mr. Khan threatened to get a machete from the car, but Mr. Khan told the police that the staff at R.I. Tyres said they would kill him. So this is a lot of different incidents where they could see that these two groups Groups and businesses were not working alongside each other harmoniously. And how on earth did he even manage to get to that many different reports and police responses and nothing was done to resolve or try to nip this in the bud? contributed to the fact that this happened. Today, seven men have been convicted of the murder of Aya Hashem after a 12-week trial at Preston Crown Court and also the attempted murder of the intended target, Mr. Khan. A woman called Judy Chapman was found guilty of Aya's manslaughter but was not found guilty of the, the attempted murder of Pasha Khan. Chapman 26 from Hubert's Road in Great Harwood drove the gunman and driver from Bolton to the Aventus car that was used in the shooting. She also collected them afterwards as well. After the murder of Aya, police launched a major investigation. They called it Operation Collindale and in the following days and weeks, 23 people were arrested in connection with the shooting and assisting those involved. Warrants were executed at various addresses in Lancashire, Manchester and the West Midlands. With inquiries conducted as far apart as Glasgow, Dublin and London, as well as in Spain and Portugal, during an international manhunt to locate the gunman Zamir Raja and Anthony Ennis who had fled the country. As the investigation gained momentum and the men's involvement became clear from the vast CCTV and digital forensic inquiries, a large team of police officers and staff began to focus on eight defendants who were subsequently charged, stood trial and convicted of the her murder. Abu Qasatiya contacted an associate to arrange to buy a cheap, expendable car that could be used in the shooting. On May the 10th, he paid £300 for a 53 plate Toyota Aventus that was paid for by Solomon. It was in working order, but he had a battery issue and often needed jump starting. On the evening before Aya was killed, Saturday, May the 16th, Zamir Raja and Anthony Ennis met up with Ayaz Hussein and Faraz Solomon in Blackburn after travelling together to Liverpool in an associate's car. At around 6.35 pm, the four driven by Hussein scoped out and travelled the route the event would take, meaning that Raja and Ennis from Manchester could familiarise themselves with the area ahead of what was going to take place the day after. Solomon had left his mobile phone in his car, which was parked on his street to provide an alibi for his location. But ironically, nobody else left their phones at home. Everybody else was monitored quite heavily via their locations on their phone.
Part of the evidence as well that convicted Solomon was CCTV that caught him hanging out of the back of a car collecting latex gloves from a colleague at RI Tyres at the location in Kapinuk. The Avensus was moved into a car park on Wellington Road a short time later, ready to be used the next day and it was also to be dumped after the shooting. Later that night, Solomon, who had been uncontactable on his phone in the day, was contacted by his girlfriend who accused him of cheating. Kashif Masoor messaged her to explain that Solomon had not cheated and they had been up to something saying you'll find out tomorrow it'll probably be in the papers so this was a massive element of the evidence used against them where them boasting to their girlfriends and also predicting what was going to happen of course they didn't know that Aya was going to get killed and them saying it would be in the papers the next day was not the person they intended later that day around 10 to 2 Judy Chapman and her boyfriend Uffman Satia drove from their home in Great Harwood in her car a blue Ford Fiesta to the car park on Wellington Road. This is where Offman checked on the Aventus. At around 2.25pm the pair began their journey to collect Raja and Ennis from Bolton. CCTV captured them getting into Chapman's Fiesta with Offman Satia collapsing the passenger seat to allow them access. Ennis was carrying two plastic carrier bags while Raja was also in possession of a separate carrier bag. At 2.40, Kashif Manzor went to the Wellington Road car park and jump-started the Aventus and kept watch of it whilst it was running, waiting for the arrival of Chapman in the Fiesta, containing the shooter and the driver. Chapman and her passengers, Uthman, Raja and Ennis, met with Aya Hussein and Abu Qasitia in his Range Rover on Jack Walker Way. Here it is believed there was given final instructions. The fiesta continued to Wellington Road where Zamir Raja and Anthony Ennis exited, getting into the Aventus to carry out their planned execution of the rival. They left Ennis at the wheel and Raja in the back at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and they drove past Quickshine on the opposite side of the road. They went behind RI tyres, turning around so they could come back on the same side of the road as Quickshine and see their target, Pasha Khan. The back window was lowered down in preparation for the shooting. They drove round a second time and Mr Khan was stood outside. Solomon on the forecourt of RI tyres was seen on CCTV looking over his shoulders towards Quickshine in anticipation of what he thought was about to happen. The events has passed by again and turned around and repeated the journey past Quickshine for the fourth time. After the final trip, the passenger window was again lowered in preparation for the firearm to be aimed and fired. As this was happening, Kashif Manzor pulled up to RI tyres in his car and parked it on the forecourt. He got out carrying jump leads that they believe were used to start the Aventus 20 minutes before. And he was seen looking directly at the car as it was driven by for a final time. At 3pm the Aventus passed Quickshine on the fourth occasion and slowed down. The gun was pointed towards Mr Khan and it fired and hit one of Quickshine's windows. It then sped up and the second shot was fired and sadly hitting Aya Hashem. Mr Khan instantly jumped over the fence to help and Mr Sullivan showed little reaction. Ennis and Raja continued onto Wellington Road and dumped the Aventus and got into Miss Chapman's Fiesta, who was still with her boyfriend, Uffman, and they all together drove back to Bolton. Just after the shooting at 3 o'clock, Ayaz Hussein and Abu Qar Satia visited Rosewell service station and filled a jerry can with petrol that they believe was destined to burn out the Aventus. The pair then went back to the shooting to see a crowd of people helping Miss Asham as she lay injured on the ground. It is thought the gathering of people and the responding of the police patrols deterred the pair from carrying out the burning of the vehicle. They left the scene and Hussein called Faraz Suleiman. Police flooded the area and located the Aventus within one hour of the shots being fired. A subsequent search revealed an unspent cartridge similar to the bullet that was found on the forecourt in the rear of the car. Police went to get CCTV from RI Tyres, giving the buildings close proximity to Quickshine. Ayers Hussein was visibly shocked when the footage showed Aya being shot. Suleiman then gestured towards the door, walking out the room, and Hussein and Abu Kar in front of the police went into a different office and began to speak. Abu Kar was in the room when a voice announced over the police radio that the Aventus has been found.
He then left the room and went to speak to Suleiman and Hussein, who were in the forecourt of Arai. They got in the Range Rover and headed in the direction of Wellington Road, where the Avensus was seen dumped before they returned back. Suleiman was arrested the day after the murder on Monday the 18th of May, and that was followed by Abu Bakr on Tuesday the 19th of May. His car was also seized. Satya's phone that was sat on the driver's seat had been remotely wiped, but specialist officers were able to recover the contents later on. Judy Chapman and Uthman Satya's arrest followed on Wednesday, May the 20th, and Ayas Hussein and Kashif were detained on May the 21st. Nine days after the killing of Ayah Husham, who was killed on May the 26th by Zamir Raja, driven by his associate. He intimidated him into taking him to Glasgow Airport and they boarded a flight to Dublin and then got a further flight to Lisbon in Portugal. So that means that the £1,500 that Suleiman paid Zamir was spent probably just on a few flights. Three days later, Anthony Ennis flew out of Heathrow Airport using a relative's passport and he met up with Raja at Lisbon Airport. The pair booked into a hotel in Marbella on Wednesday, June the 3rd, with Raja boarding a ferry from France to the UK on Friday the 5th of June. He was arrested at Houston train station in London on Saturday, June the 6th. A search of the Nissan Duke that Raja drove to Liverpool with Anthony Ennis on Saturday, May the 16th, revealed a similar body to the one that killed Aya. On Saturday, July the 4th, Anthony Ennis was arrested by Spanish authorities and was later extradited back to the UK. Zoe Russell from the major investigation team in Lancashire said she's delighted with the outcome and the result of months of challenging work. Ayers family paid tribute to her and they said we thank God for the justice that has been served today. Our dear beautiful angel is now in heaven and we know you're in a better place and a more beautiful place. For the justice that has been served today. To our dear beautiful angel in heaven, we know you are in a better and more beautiful place. God chose you from amongst many and blessed you with martyrdom. Aya, we are so proud of you and we miss you so much. Our lives are done without you. This God's decree and praise be to God for this. You will remain in our hearts forever. You loved life and despite all the struggles and barriers that we face in this country, it did not stop you contributing to your community and charities, including the Children's Society and fundraising at Salford University, where you were studying to become a barrister. God chose you as an angel in his heaven. <laughs> heaven is yours, and may God give us the patience after your marriage. We love you. Mr. Solomon had everything going for him in life. He had a business, he had friends, he had family, and he chose to throw it all away over the fact of greed and ego. Because at the end of the day, you're bound to get competition in life and there's nothing wrong with competition. And this is definitely not a reason to want to try to kill somebody. And he's a big reminder to make sure that you don't let things get out of hand because there was a series of events that led up to this. These things don't just happen overnight. That has culminated in one person losing their life and eight people losing their freedom. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Rest in peace to Aya Hashem and I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.